This morning I wrote a post, um, a short post on a forum concerning something which it would appear, having written it, that I'm not alone in um, the opinion or the, the way that I feel um, in respect to the topic of that post. And I'll tell you what it concerns, and it concerns uh, balance, balanced dog training, and it concerns a concerning trend which seems to be uh, prevalent um, and growing, to be honest, on particularly on YouTube, videos that are being shown on YouTube, of um, dog training and the way that dog training needs to be, or the way that dog training ought to be and behaviour change ought to be. And it's this sort of like portrayal of um, almost that dogs need to be completely controlled. So, so that any sort of like independent free spirit aspect to the dog, the dog being a dog, the dog displaying species specific um, behaviours in given contexts, being able to interact freely and just be a dog, seems to be as though that, that, that isn't a good thing, you know, that isn't particularly being permitted. And I talk of videos where I see um, maybe 10, 12, 15 dogs in a small room that are all on place boards whilst a trainer is talking to a camera about how important it is to have the structure and the pack structure and the, the calmness and the grounding and the such and such within the dogs. And I agree. I agree that it is very important. It's an important part of a dog's life to be able to respond to commands which do um, necessitate that the dog is calm and relaxes and chills out. But it's almost like this is becoming the be-all and end-all. You know, there, there are videos where all I'm really seeing and posts where all I'm really seeing repeatedly again and again are dogs on place boards or dogs on place boards whilst another dog is walking amongst them because this dog is um, super aggressive or red zone or, you know, super high energy or blah, 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 blah. You know, it's done this, that and the other. And so we're, we're grounding the dog. We're bringing the dog in and showing the dog how to respond with the power of the pack and, the, 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 you know, the balance within that pack and all this sort of thing. But I'm not really seeing a great deal in the way of any any actual change. And I'm not, as I say, I'm not alone. I know there's other people that are thinking the same thing. In the way of change which exists outside of that setting, outside of that um, facility where the dog is, is, is in there and is being placed. And that's pretty much all that seems to be happening. The dog is either on a place board or it's walking with a group of dogs on lead or maybe off lead but on tool alongside a person who's maybe got 10, 15 others. And this is carrying this big sort of like whoop whoop mentality as to how fantastic that is. And I just think, I look at it, you know, and I just think it isn't difficult. It isn't difficult to walk 15 dogs. It isn't difficult to walk 30 dogs. It's not a hard thing to achieve, particularly if you're not, not if you're using um, leads or pinch collars or remote collars or, you know, whatever. It isn't a difficult thing to do. But, um, you know, fair enough, the person's walking lots of dogs. Right, that's absolutely fine. But I don't see anything where dogs are being recognised and enjoyed for what they are. It seems that, that this there's a shift towards control, control, and everything comes from control. Control is incredibly important, but it's still an animal. You're still working with an animal um, and the joy of that animal comes from the interaction. It comes from the bond, the relationship, the trust, the development, the things that you share, the things that you do, the entertainment, the fun, as well as the control. And if you're going to um, basically say, no, all dogs need is this, you know, you can call it your pack structure or whatever you want to call it, where everything in my life is almost directed by me. Everything that that dog does is directed by me. That isn't true. That isn't true because you only need to turn dogs out and let them run around and play with one another to see that they are not looking for rigid structure. You know, they interact, they go off and they sniff things, they do things, they, they go and they be dogs. But this seems to be something that is almost being sort of like seen as a negative thing. It's almost something that's being weeded out in these videos that are put out. I don't see a great many videos of these um, super trained, um, responsive dogs off lead, out as a group, running around together, responding. I don't see it. It's all, it all takes place in a facility. And if I'm in, I don't know, if I'm in New York, for example, well, I've got Central Park. If I were to just take Central Park as an example, I can take the dogs and let the dogs run off in Central Park. I can train them off lead in Central Park, you know, and show that the dogs are now responsive and are this, that, and the other. Or wherever it happens to be, you know, if I'm on a beach in California or wherever I happen to be, there is opportunity for me to do that. But it, it isn't happening. 
the videos are the same. Everything that I'm seeing is the same. You know, you just see some trainer generally where, where the focus is on this, uh, it's ego, to be honest. It's ego, it's pushing. I hope that videos that I put myself don't come across as being egotistical or, or you know, me being focusing on me. It's got nothing to do with me. There's a point that I make or there's um, the dogs, hopefully, um, p portraying and conveying what the video is about. So if it's if it's a recall, then the dogs are recalling or, you know, there's no great spiel necessarily from myself. But there's a lot of these videos where the, the vast majority of the time, I've just got somebody who seems to be more concerned about how they look and how they come across and getting work for themselves than the actual content of what's going on. And anybody, if I'm going to put a video out, and one of these videos went out was a recall, okay, so it's a recall proofing or, or, or perfecting the recall or something like that, for a dog that's inside a training hall, is about 10 feet away from the handler, and he's on a remote collar and the handler's got food. So I'm calling it in and it's coming forward and I'm, I'm feeding it. And that's apparently, that's apparently a, a, a recall. Um, it's, it's not very good. You know, you need to be... I'm not into that. I'm not into that whole thing of, I do believe in structure and I do believe that um, control needs to be there, but equally I love the dog for what it is. And I think there has to be a lot more of that because videos that are coming out where everything is like I'm surrounding myself with dogs on place boards and here's another picture of 15 dogs in pinch collars on where, you know, wherever, on a sidewalk or something in America. Okay, now let's see what you can do. Now let's see what these dogs will do. Now let's see you doing something. Free shape the dogs, interact with the dogs. Do you know what I mean? Get the dogs, show, show us something where you're actually um, working, you, where you're working with the dog and teaching them something um, positive, something that, that is basically with the dog working off its own initiative to being able to figure things out without there being the element of pressure involved or without there being the, um, you know, the negative reinforcement aspect. Let's have a look at the positive reinforcement. Let's have a look what more there is beyond the place and beyond the multiple dogs on a lead. Um, and to say, well, you know, if you were to say, well, we do show it, we do show dogs interacting with one another when there's four guys standing around with dressage whips, you know, that's so that I can nudge on and interrupt or whatever, you know, prevent fights. That's fine. That's fine. But it isn't a natural setting. And I know that I've said that before, but forget about that aspect of it. Forget about the dogs where I'm dealing with a dog that I say has got dog reactivity or human, uh, you know, tendencies to aggress towards people. But just the dogs in general, they're all... It, it, it just isn't natural. And I don't understand why somebody, if you genuinely love dogs, and if you genuinely want to understand them and want to get the best out of them, that isn't the best. You know, dogs that are just laying there doing nothing while another dog is walking amongst them or while there's a dog in the corner on a treadmill. I'm not talking about the people who operate um, rehoming uh, and work on a charitable basis, those people who are trying to get the best out of the dogs to get the dogs on to rehome them. I totally understand that. I totally understand that because you have a... Um, you know, a set time scale and you have an objective and the objective is to basically take something that was, you know, has got like a, a high level of activity, uh, energy perhaps, and, and bring it down so that it's more likely to get rehomed. I understand that. I understand. But it's for the people who are putting the videos out and, and suggesting that training um, is little more than a place board in four walls and being walked with multiple other dogs on a lead or being basically held in a position where you're giving eye contact permanently to the handler whilst another dog is shoving its nose into your groin or whatever it isn't real i don't know why you're doing it i don't i don't know the benefit i really don't know the benefit of it but surprisingly lots of people seem to think it's fantastic and magical but I, that isn't my idea of balanced dog training Balanced dog training to me involves a hell of a lot more than that. There's the whole emotive side, there's a the human dog pond, there's the reason, there's the love, the, the reason that you're doing it, the whole reason for it. And it isn't just to simply um, get the control, purely the control. But I, I said that I was going to do a video set up for somebody on it and I haven't scripted anything, as you can tell. <laughs> um, but it's just, I, I hope that comes across as how I want it to come across. Um, but just please don't don't fall into this um, this thinking, this idea that this is how uh, or what or is representative of a trained dog or a happy dog or a balanced dog. Um, dogs need to be dogs, and people need to realise that they need to let dogs be dogs rather than force your interpretation of balance onto them.